Okay, we are here at Recluse in Idaho with Mike Campbell, who's going to give us some clutch 101, I like to call it. We're going to go over the various clutch options from Recluse. And there's, you know, manual that a lot of people aren't aware of. A lot of people are aware of the auto clutches, but we're going to talk about there's different options for guys. So, Mike, let's get started right now. What do you think? Okay, so we'll go over the manual clutches first, um, where you still got to use your clutch lever just like you always have. We have our torque drive clutch pack, and then we have our full core manual torque drive system. First question I always get is, which one should I purchase? I usually ask the customer, what type of rider are you? Do you go through multiple clutch packs a year, or have you never worn out a clutch pack? That's usually the first thing I'll ask, because that's a really great deciding factor on what kind of money you need to be spending for your type of riding. Um, so if you're the kind of guy that you've never worn out a clutch pack, and that's never been an issue for you, then Torque Drive Clutch Pack is gonna give you a killer performance benefit with a great price. If you're the kind of guy that you're going through clutch packs, or that's you're me. just looking for that's the- That's me. Huh? That's me. That's you, yeah. <laughs> that's me, that goes through. If you're going through. through clutch packs like Jay does here, um, the Core Manual Torque Drive is really what you'd wanna go after. That's what's gonna give you the longest durability, and it's really all about oil flow. But we'll go back to the Torque Drive Clutch Pack and just kinda of go over the basics here. Essentially, it's steels and fibers that are gonna drop right into your OEM components. Where the difference is, is the amount of steel plates that you get. Our friction plates are a lot thinner um, than the OEM ones, so we're able to get more in the same area as the OEM Clutch Pack. We put steel sleeves in your clutch basket to protect your basket. So those guys basically clamp that and hold that in place and protect your aluminum basket from notching. Um, do not put these in a notched basket. Uh, they're not a Band-Aid. Um, they won't break right away, but if you put it in a notch basket, over time, eventually, they can break. And obviously, metal in your engine is no good. And, and we, we talked about this before, but when you change out plates, you want to change those every time. Correct. When you get a new clutch pack, you will get new sleeves. Um, so when you, if you're trying to order individual components, replace the sleeves. Um, it, it's, it's worth it. Um, they're, they're fairly inexpensive and definitely worth it in the long run because obviously metal in your engine would be terrible. Um, the pressure plate springs that we include in the torque drive clutch pack tend to be roughly 10% softer than stock. And so you can get a much softer feeling clutch. Um, and then you can choose. You can run your OEM springs if you want, or you can actually intermix the two. Um, if you've got a six spring pressure plate, you just do every other one. Um, and it'll still lift the pressure plate evenly. So you have a little bit of options there. Um, but it's a very easy clutch pack install. You can do it in a very short amount of time. Most garage mechanics can easily drop it in. The full core manual torque drive system obviously comes with our components. And the biggest thing is oil flow. Heat is what kills clutches. And so getting oil in there consistently flowing is what's gonna keep the heat down and give you that long-term durability that the abusive riders are looking for. Or if you're just wanting to have a great feeling clutch as well. We have so many little features uh, that we do inside of these. Sometimes I forget to even talk about them, but we'll start off in the hub here. So the way we machine the hub, there's a little aluminum lip that we machine down here. There's a steel snap ring that we put inside of here. And what that's for is to dam the oil basically inside of here so that when you pull in your clutch lever, this pressure plate is gonna lift. So when you pull in your clutch lever, this guy separates and that allows these plates that are all stuck together to separate as well. And then all the oil that's dammed up inside of there is then forced out because the clutch is spinning. It's forced out in between all of these holes that we drill inside of there and gets the oil directly to where the heat is being generated. When you have frictions and steels all rubbing against each other, you know, that's what's creating all that heat. And so getting oil directly to where the heat is being generated is, is the best way to keep it down. And you want to keep it a consistent flow. You don't want to keep the oil in there as well. So you do want to allow it to escape so you can get fresh oil in there. And that's why our pressure plates are a very open flow design. Um, there's not a lot of aluminum there. Not at all. Not at all. They're extremely light. And these are optimized for clutch lever feel. The modulation windows are very smooth, consistent. Um, a lot of people really love just how they feel right off the bat. So even if you're not an abusive guy and you don't go through clutch packs, but you're just looking for a terrific working clutch. This is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best manual clutches on the market. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the springs real quick and those uh, retainers. So the pressure plate springs, um, we have all kinds of different pressure plate springs. Um, so if you have a really built engine, give us a call. You might need some stiffer ones. But the ones that we include in the kit will work for just about 
any mild build. So if you're just doing a high compression piston, some cams, things like that, the springs that we include are gonna be totally fine. But if you're doing like a significant big bore kit or something like that, give us a call and we'll make sure you get the right springs. The spring retainers uh, basically allow the springs to only move up and down when they're getting compressed. So when you put these springs inside a pressure plate, there's a little lip at the bottom of this, of this spring here. So you put it down in the pressure plates right here and you spin it till it hits the spot comes to a stop right there. And when it comes to that stop, you know that that spring is sitting up and down completely. It's not cocked sideways at all if it's sitting on that lip. So you get it caught right there and you put the spring retainer inside the spring and you tighten it down. And that just ensures that when that spring is being compressed, it's only moving up and down and it's not getting pushed side to side and rubbing against the, the pressure plate walls. And that'll, that'll give you a weird clutch lever feel, maybe an inconsistent feel. Um, sometimes it's hard to even diagnose that and you don't really can't quite really feel what's happening inside of there. So just that little thing right there, that spring retainer and the lip that we machine on the bottom to catch the spring allows it to move up and down and gives you a killer clutch lever feel. Okay, very good. And grab that uh, 350 bass uh, inner hub real quick. Yeah. Because we're talking about oiling. I want to just touch on the fact if you got this kit for yeah. a KTM, you would get those added features that you've done for cooling. Absolutely. So the 350s, um, for whatever reason, tend to have really hot clutches. My abusive guys go through more clutch packs on the 350s than, say, the 250. And they're very, very similar engines. Really, it's just a different bore. But the 350s in particular, um, they need more oil flow. And so right down here, there's these really complicated little holes that we have to drill at an angle to allow the oil to come from the transmission shaft. It gets basically kind of dammed up right here and forced out in between these holes. Again, right to where the heat's being generated, all your clutch plates are sitting basically inside this area right here. And so we're just trying to get as much oil flow directly to where the heat's being generated and allowing it to escape as well. So you got these pressure plates that sit like that. So you got a very, just allows oil to consistently move in and out of the clutches. It's all about optimizing that oil flow. Okay, and this setup's what a lot of the top motocross guys would be using, mm -hmm. uh, and race team guys and so forth. Absolutely, yeah. They, mo the majority of them are using our manual clutches, the core manual torque drive. The Star Racing Yamaha guys, Eli Tomac. Um, hey, that guy's pretty good. He's pretty good. He uh, wrapped up that championship. <laughs> that was that was some great racing, by the way. <laughs> two, two, two in one year is pretty awesome. In the Absolutely. Club, so congratulations on that. Absolutely. All right, so let's move over to what what Recluse is really known for, yeah. and because. People say the word recluse, they ask, hey, do you have a recluse in there? Uh, we get phone calls all day long, uh, basically saying, hey, I got a recluse in my bike. It's, <laughs> right. it's, it's not really working. I'm like, okay, well, there's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> which, which one do you have? Which one do you have? So recluse is known for auto clutches. And, then, and so now we've covered the what you're kind of not known for. And we're going to talk about this. Uh, this is the Radius CX kit. And we'll also talk about the Radius X kit as well. Yes. So the Radius CX is our top of the line auto clutch. Comes with all of the components. Now we also have Radius X, which is essentially just a clutch pack like that, that drops into your stock components. And so uh, the main difference is the core components come with the Radius CX. Radius X is really just a clutch pack that drops into your stock components. And so again, same thing with the manual clutches. If you're a really abusive guy on clutches, you probably wanna go with the full package. If you've never really worn out a clutch pack, Radius X is gonna give you everything you're looking for. Um, Essentially, the auto clutch gives you an optional clutch lever. Your clutch lever is still there, still fully functional if you want to use it for any reason, but you don't have to. You can literally click it into gear, go do 100 miles, and never touch your clutch lever if you don't want to. Um, just really gives you an option. Hey, we grab that slave real quick, because a few of the models are going to come with a slave. Wh which models will come with a slave so off any, the top of your head? Any hydraulic bike with an auto clutch is going to come with an adjustable slave cylinder. Okay, so all of them will come with a slave. If it's uh, So like the new Cowies that have uh, hydraulic clutches, the Hondas that have hydraulic clutches, and then of course all the Austrian brands have hydraulic clutches. They will come with the adjustable slave cylinders um, also in the package. Okay, very good. All right, so let's talk about the benefit, the, the features here on our uh, EXP disc and uh, what all we can expect on this auto clutch setup. Yeah, absolutely. So the EXP disc, oh, your screwdrivers are right there, there on, the, on the Husky. Yeah, so the EXP disc, this is all based on centrifugal force. So when this spins up, these weighted wedges, they throw out, that expands the disc, and that's what drives the bike forward. When you slam on the brake, it disengages, and that, that's basically what it makes it so it doesn't stall. Yeah, let's show how much it moves right there. Let me get it a little closer. Yeah, it's so it's you can not actually, much at all. It doesn't move a lot. And then, that, and then hold this together so they can kind of see what that gap it's making up. I and mean, when we talk about that gap, yeah. when we have the pressure plate and inner hub put together, we're, they're, they're gonna make up this gap 
Exactly. So we set the pressure plate to sit away from the clutch pack about roughly 30 to 35 thou. It's not much of a gap. And so that's what allows you to click it into gear and it acts like it's still neutral because the pressure plate's not engaged. If this was all the way up against the pressure plate, it would just stall like a manual clutch. So we create this little gap there basically. And then that's what sets the platform up for this EXP disc to expand, hit that pressure plate and drive the bike forward. These little guys that are inside the EXP disc, these are the springs that are inside of it. We have different rate springs, different stiffnesses. So you can choose what RPM you want it to engage and also disengage. But it comes assembled with what you guys think is optimal. Absolutely. Um, we try to do that work ahead of time. Most people leave it the way it comes out of the box. Um, but if you've done significant motor work or you're just a really picky rider, um, you can tune it to how you want it to engage. So you can make it so when you crack the throttle, it wants to loop out right away, or you can have it so it's just nice and smooth and linear. Just depends on what type of rider you are and how you want to have it set up. Okay, very good. Anything else to touch on on the Radius CX or X? Um, well, it's... it's comes with a cover. You know, if you need a basket, if your basket's worn, you guys have baskets we have, sold separately. Absolutely, we have clutch Grab baskets. Grab us a basket, let's talk about that real quick. I don't know that we've touched on that in this video. Yeah, so the clutch baskets that we make, they're all hard anodized billet aluminum. And with the Radius CX, you're gonna get the steel sleeves for the basket that sit inside there. So it protects your basket there. But the big thing about our baskets, what really separates it is the cushions that we have. Our cushions um, are replaceable. When these cushions wear out, that's typically when you start to see the basket notch on the inside here, or, or you start to see the inner hub have notching right here where the yeah. steel plates are. It's typically all caused by rubber dampers being worn out. Right. So having them replaceable, um, if you stay on top of it, you can make everything last a lot longer. Now, Recluse also has rubbers, uh, bush, uh, what are we calling these? Rubber right? cushions. Cushions for the stock KTM baskets, right? Yes. Because yeah, so, that, that's a big thing that, um, because they wear so quickly, the stock ones. They do, yeah. So this is an example of like, if you have a KTM 450 or 250 or 300, this is what the inner hub looks like. And there's rubber dampers that sit on the inside of this. And there's another piece that sits over the top. We make our own uh, polymer. Uh, it's our own kind of different polymers that we put together. Basically, it lasts longer than the OEM ones. Um, typically, you're gonna get close to 100 hours out of ours. Uh, the OEM ones, they want you to, the manual says every 20 hours. The average guy is 30 to 40 hours most of the time. Depends on the rider and how abusive they are, of course. Um, but yes, we do make rubber dampers to replace that in the Austrian bikes. All right, very good. That's a great look at uh, some of the key components available from Recluse. Um, we're going to make a separate video for those that are wanting tips on adjusting. We'll have a separate uh, video coming out that will give you some tips on adjusting your Radius uh, uh, CX or Radius X because, if we talked about this before, with an auto clutch, one of the things that I discovered is when I, the, the couple that I rode a few years ago uh, were typically never uh, adjusted correctly. Yeah, it being adjusted correctly is really, that's the key. If it's adjusted properly, it's really hard not to like the auto clutch. If it's not set up properly, um, it can feel like crud. Okay. So yeah, getting it set up properly is key. All right, thanks a ton. Awesome uh, look at uh, Recluse. We appreciate it. Good job.